To whom with my whole life I go for refuge. When I first met the Vietnamese Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh at the State of the World Forum in San Francisco, I really wanted to know much more about his very profound Buddhist beliefs. In the spring of 1996, I finally got my opportunity at his Plum Village community home in southwest France. It was fantastic, really. Yeah, a tree is more than a tree. Thai, how do you see the role of Buddhism in today's world? The role of Buddhism should be uh, the same as yesterday, uh, trying to help people to understand better the nature of their suffering and uh, telling them how to look uh, more deeply into uh, the nature of uh, their suffering in order to find a way out. Um, because. Uh, uh, Buddhism, uh, according to the insight of Buddhism, uh, you cannot get out of uh, your suffering un unless you understand truly the nature of your suffering. So with uh, concentration, with uh, mindfulness, we will be able to see deeply into the nature of this suffering. And then, uh, of course, uh, the way out will appear uh, through that kind of uh, deep looking that we call uh, meditation. Because meditation just means uh, to be still, to be looking deeply, and the insight will be the fruit of that kind of uh, uh, mm, practice. That is uh, the essence of Buddhism. And meditation is um, something that can uh, provide us with uh, many different ways of uh, looking, contemplating, and finding, finding out uh, the way out. And that is uh, also the role of Buddhism um, yesterday and today. So, in fact, what you're saying, I think, is that we should make the best use of our suffering. That's right, because uh, we should not try, we should not attempt to throw our suffering away. That's what people want to do when they suffer. Uh, but uh, if you don't know anything about your suffering, you cannot get out of it. Uh, it is like um, when you practice uh, organic uh, gardening, you preserve, you keep all the garbage, all the organic uh, garbage so that you can transform uh, it into the compost and uh, flowers and fruits and vegetables will be uh, coming out of that kind of compost. Our happiness, our freedom, our stability are the fruit of our uh, practice uh, looking deeply into the nature of suffering and transform that suffering into flowers into um, mm, joy, into peace, uh, again, suffering is very important. What I like the teaching of Thich Han is he teaches a real problem because he said that Buddhism has no meaning if you do not, if Buddhism do not help you to transform your bad habit energy who make you suffer and make other people around you suffer. Buddhism is not Buddhism if they do not help, but if that uh, Buddhism do not help you to transform yourself into a source of peace and joy for yourself and for others. 
mindfulness practice is the heart of the Buddhist practice. Mindfulness is the capacity of uh, being aware of what is going on in this very moment. There are many ways of practicing mindfulness. To breathe mindfully is one. Mindful breathing in and out is something that uh, we can begin with. When you practice mindful breathing, you pay attention only to your breathing. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. You, you abandon your thinking. You abandon your worries. You abandon your projects. You just go back to your breathing and uh, you enjoy your breathing. And if you continue like that for a few moments, uh, your body and your mind will come together as one reality. And this is already a great achievement because in our daily life, we live in such a way that our body is here but our mind is somewhere else. Whether it is in China, it is in New York, uh, Copenhagen, or uh, in the past, or uh, the future. And we are not really there. We are only there in a real way if our body and if our mind are together. So breathing in and out mindfully help bring body and mind together. And you only need maybe half a minute sometimes less, in order to achieve that uh, result. At that time, I was uh, very, um, mm, I was very passionate about Buddhism, and a lot of concept about Buddhism maybe is not very Buddhist, but it's my way of seeing Buddhism. So I want to become a nun, to be celibate, celibate, celibate nun, working to help the poor people. But in 1959, there is no many nuns who, Viet, Vietnamese Buddhist nuns, who work for poor people in the slum area like me. So my first master on Buddhism was not Thich Nhat Hanh. He somehow said that, oh, you are, you don't, you cannot become a nun because you are too revolutionary. And you fight everything. You are too frank to tell directly what you believe in uh, in a too too strong way. So I agree not to enter into a monastery, a nunnery, until I met with Tishyatan. And Tishyatan said that no, Buddhism do not teach you in such way. You can become a very profound person, a very awakened person. You be, can become a Buddha by, by being what you are, who you are. You don't need to, to, to transform yourself uh, to another person. You are what you are, but try to live deeply your life and use the teaching of the Buddha to see profoundly life. In walking meditation is to enjoy just walking. Uh, it is uh, not a means by an end by itself. So you walk in such a way that you enjoy walking, that you become uh, 
fully alive and happy during the walking. And in order to be uh, alive and uh, happy, uh, you should be free. If you are not free, and then there is no way you can be alive or be happy. Free from what? Free from your worries, <coughs> your projects, free from uh, the past, the future, and you make yourself available uh, in the present moment. Sounds easy, but it needs some training. When I first met Thai, I feel that he shared his whole being. So you have the impression that you are in the atmosphere where his love, his, uh, his understanding, his uh, profoundness are coming with you. And you, together with him, you go deep into your own problem. So in the same, the same lecture he gave, but 500 persons have the impression that he, he spoke for me. Not, not, not for others, because the profoundness enters to each person and you see your real problem by yourself. And you, you have the impression, ah, now I see that. And others have different problems than you. But they also see a lot of clarity in their, in their mind and they see the solution by themselves. Uh. So you have to bring back 100% of yourself to this moment in order to do the walking meditation. When you make a step, you really, you really make one step. And you make it with 100% uh, of your being. And that is the point. Usually during walking meditation, I take uh, two steps while I breathe in. And then I make uh, two steps while I breathe out. And I walk um, naturally, with ease. Uh, I don't seem to make any effort at all. Because, because I am, I just enjoy my walking. Why did you adopt engaged Buddhism during the Vietnam War? Engaged Buddhism is just Buddhism, because if it is not engaged, it is not Buddhism. Buddhism does not urge us to run away from suffering. Buddhism urges us to confront suffering, looking directly at it. And um, mm, the true Buddhism should be practiced uh, in your normal life, daily life. So when you become a monk or a nun, a, a lay practitioner, uh, you do not run away from your problem, your difficulties, but you uh, really want to use the practice of Buddhism in order to confront it. There are people who think that Buddhism uh, can be practiced uh, out of the context of uh, everyday life. Uh, to become a Buddhist means to try to avoid uh, compli uh, complications of life, uh, the suffering that you encounter in your daily life. It's like um, escaping. And because there are people who think like that, that is why the term engaged Buddhism is needed to help them. The second precept, aware of the suffering caused by exploitation social injustice, stealing and oppression, 
I vow to cultivate loving kindness and learn ways to work for the well-being of people, animals, plants and minerals. I vow to practice generosity by sharing my time, energy and material resources with those who are in real need. I am determined not to steal and not to possess anything that should belong to others. I will respect the property of others, but I will prevent others from profiting from human suffering or the suffering of other species on earth. This is the second of the five <coughs> precepts. Have you made an effort to study and practice it during the past two weeks? You have also been very much involved in healing. Uh, examples are healing of the Vietnamese boat people, the uh, U.S. Vietnamese war veterans. Uh, what got you involved in all this? Compassion is uh, the kind of uh, energy that uh, need to be expressed in a very concrete way. If you practice uh, look, looking deeply, you understand your suffering and the suffering of the people around you. And when you understand the suffering, a kind of energy is born in you, the energy of compassion, the energy of loving kindness. And that energy needs to be to be manifested, uh, to be realized, to take form. Any kind of energy seek to take form in a concrete way. So if uh, you go out to help the war victims, the war veterans, the boat people, that is because you have understood their suffering and you cannot just remain uh, inactive. When uh, the bombing, the bombing is going on around your temple, even if your bomb, your temple has not been bombed, but uh, sitting in meditation, in the meditation hall, you hear the cry of uh, babies, children, and adults. Uh, you just cannot uh, stay there without doing anything. Because uh, to the Buddhist, to meditate means to be aware of what is going on in the present moment. And what is going on in the present moment is the suffering of children and adults around you. So the appropriate form of practice would be to be out there in order to do anything uh, you can do to help. And you do these things in such a way that uh, you still remain a contemplative. Because there are many people who are so active, but who get angry uh, very quickly, and who lose themselves very quickly. They cannot go on for a long time. So if you are a true practitioner of meditation. You have to learn to do these things to help people while remaining a contemplative person. That is why you have to learn how to practice mindful breathing when you uh, rescue a boat uh, person. You have to learn uh, mindful breathing, mindful um, looking when you help uh, a wounded child in the war, and uh, practicing meditation while helping uh, the victims of uh, war, uh, helping the suffering people in the mindfulness, in the contemplative mode, is the very uh, um, expression of engaged Buddhism. The teaching of Thich Pan or of myself 
it's helpful to people because we really truly live that suffering and we try to transform and when we are successful in transforming our suffering and then we 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 help people and it's a true practice it's not uh, intellectual it's not verbal it's not uh, in a book the teaching of the buddha we try to really put into our own life thank you how can we dissolve our wrong perceptions transcend our wrong views and see one another in fresh new ways we can do that firstly by learning uh, to uh, to know to be aware that what we have seen have heard may be a wrong perception uh, we should not be too sure of what uh, we have uh, seen or we have heard uh, we have thought because uh, the object of your uh, eyes your ear or your thinking uh, may be uh, erroneous wrong so uh, to remind yourself to ask yourself the question are you sure that what you have seen what you have heard what you have thought is not uh, a correct perception because we live um, um, a lot with our wrong perceptions sometimes we keep our wrong perceptions for a long time a few years maybe 10 years or 20 years or we might bring um, our wrong perception into our tomb graveyard and that is why uh, we suffer because wrong perception is uh, wrong perceptions is the base for our suffering wrong perceptions uh, bring about uh, jealousy bring about fear bring about anger and that is why it's very important to learn how to e examine our perception and not to get caught in one of them uh, in one day uh, we may be caught by many wrong perceptions and that is why the Buddha reminds us to be very careful about our perception always check out uh, always check several times in order to find out whether what you hear what you see what you feel what you think uh, is uh, correct or, or not that you are walking on uh, this beautiful planet is already a miracle can you tell me a greater miracle? No, the miracle is that you are alive. You are breathing in and out. You are able to smile. You are able to see the blue sky. And you are walking on this beautiful planet of ours. If only every day we remember that, we will not suffer too much. I think we can begin to heal ourselves. And the miracle to me is to be there alive in every moment of uh, your daily life you don't need a lot of money in order to do that you don't need a lot of car a lot of houses a lot of um, money in your bank account you only need your feet to be walking on earth you only need your nose to breathe in and out and these things are so precious and mindfulness help you to recognize that you have conditions to be happy what are you waiting for to be happy in your very important recent book living buddha living christ you emphasize getting and keeping in touch with your own traditions uh, which will generate love and understanding how does that work Uh, every every one of us is like uh, a tree uh, a tree always need uh, needs roots in order to stand firm and to be healthy to be beautiful uh, a person that uh, has no roots cannot be a healthy and beautiful person and all of us have our, our traditional 
roots. We, all of us have our spiritual roots, our um, cultural roots, and uh, it is very uh, unfortunate to notice <coughs> that uh, many of the people in our mod modern society are there without uh, any roots. They are alienated from their own society, uh, family, uh, religion, and um, culture. And they are wandering around like a hungry ghost, seeking uh, for something to be lived in, something good, something true, something beautiful. And um, these people suffer so much because they don't have roots. And uh, that is why the true practice of Buddhism should be the practice of helping these people, these hungry ghosts, to go back to their own roots, to make peace again with their family, with their tradition, with their culture. Concerning Jews, they seem to have an attraction to Buddhism, especially those who are well-read and educated. And even though they remain Jewish underneath, what do you think the attraction of Buddhism is for people of the Jewish faith? I think uh, what is the most attractive in Buddhism is the concrete uh, practice. Um, like... Uh, Mindful breathing, mindful uh, eating, uh, mindful sitting, um, and uh, the uh, mindful embracing of uh, the pain, uh, and looking deeply into the nature of our pain to find a way out. Um, there are many things that uh, they admire in Buddhism that exists already in their tradition. But because, uh, but because uh, they, they have not had the chance to consider them carefully, like in the Jewish tradition, you can practice right in your kitchen, lay, uh, to lay the table, to uh, pour um, um, the milk, to prepare a dish. Uh, all these things can be done as a practice. Uh, you do everything uh, like uh, in the presence of God. Doing everything in the presence of God. To us is to do in mindfulness. The energy of mindfulness uh, shine upon everything you do uh, I am drinking tea, I drink tea, and I know I am drinking tea. That is uh, the light of mindfulness, is shining my tea drinking. Uh, and mindfulness is not different from the energy of God, because in the, in the presence of God, you know things that y you are doing. The differences between uh, spiritual traditions, I think, is more on emphasis. Uh, if you go back to your tradition, and if you practice looking deeply, you may find uh, uh, equivalent uh, values, um, values that you have found in Buddhism. And I think uh, what is uh, special of Buddhism is that uh, you can learn concrete uh, exercises, you can learn concrete uh, practices in order to, to put these uh, teaching into practice the teaching of Christianity, the teaching of uh, Buddhism, the teaching of uh, Islam, for instance, into practice. Christians and Buddhists have different attitudes about reincarnation and rebirth. Can these be reconciled? It depends on the way you understand uh, rebirth or reincarnation. <coughs> to me, we are reborn uh, every moment of our daily life. because things change every minute, every second. 
in this moment, you are already different from you uh, five minutes ago. There are a lot of things that have uh, died in you physically and also uh, in the realm of uh, perceptions and feelings. And so you are a new person. You have been reborn uh, from the you of five minutes ago into the you of this very moment. And in a few minutes, you'll be reborn also into another you. And that is the meaning of impermanence. Buddhism believes in nirvana and not in God as the ultimate dimension of reality. Can you explain? Uh, I'm not sure that uh, Buddhists uh, only believe in nirvana and do not believe in God. All of this uh, depends on our uh, notion of nirvana or God. Uh, nirvana means extinction. 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 Blowing out like a candle. And, uh, and the, usual, the useful question is to ask, uh, extinction of what? Because uh, it's not extinction of life. That would be uh, too sad to say that extinction here means the extinction of, uh, of life. Extinction here means the extinction of suffering, the extinction of uh, wrong perceptions, the extinction of uh, notions. I like that. Notions that prevent reality to be directly experienced. Uh, for instance, uh, what I have been uh, Drinking is a variety of uh, Chinese tea called oolong. And uh, if you ask me how does it taste like, well, it's very difficult for me to tell you how it tastes. Even if I have uh, a dictionary and a lot of ideas and notions, I cannot describe to you exactly what the taste is like. The best thing is you taste it by yourself, direct experience. So all the words, all the notions to describe tea uh, are useless. So the same thing is true with nirvana. You cannot attempt to describe nirvana by words, uh, notions, and ideas. Nirvana is something that has to be experienced by yourself. Nirvana is uh, the ultimate dimension of reality. In the historical dimension of reality, you distinguish uh, birth, death, uh, being, non-being, uh, and many, th many things more like um, high or low, um, in, inside or outside. But uh, in the ultimate dimension, all these things uh, cannot be applied to reality. It is like uh, the waves and the water. The, wave, uh, the waves are belong to the historical dimension. You can talk about the beginning of a wave, the end of a wave, uh, the beauty of a wave, the ugliness of a wave, uh, and so on. But when we come to water, we cannot use the same kind of notions and words. Uh, the water uh, symbolizes the ultimate dimension. And speaking of the water, you cannot use terms and notions like beginning and being, non-being, and so on. But uh, what is clear is that uh, waves are not uh, something that can be separated from water. In fact, uh, if you touch the wave uh, deeply, you touch the water. 
And when uh, you are able to touch the water, all your notions will be transcended. Uh, a wave may be very afraid of its death, thinking that uh, in a few seconds more I will be no wave. Uh, it's my end. But if the wave is capable of uh, bending down and touching its own uh, substance, namely water, and if the wave knows that it is at the same time water, and then she will be able to transcend her fear. So that is uh, the same thing with humans. If uh, we observe uh, reality deeply in the light of uh, impermanence, non-self, according to the teaching of the Buddha, we'll be able to touch the world of no birth and no death that is available in the here and the now. And once you have a touch, the, the, the world of no birth and no death, all your fear and most of your suffering will vanish. And that is why um, uh, Nirvana, the world of no birth, no death, cannot be, cannot be described by terms that we use to describe uh, uh, the historical dimension. Uh, according to many uh, friends in Christianity, uh, they see God as the ground of being, of the essence of um, being. Uh, and uh, many of our uh, Christian friends uh, say that uh, it is not possible to talk about God, to have an idea, to have a notion to have a description of God, because God is a reality that transcends all words, all notions, and all descriptions. That's very close to Nirvana. So you can say that uh, those who believe in Nirvana also believe in God, because God is our ultimate dimension that cannot be described by words and concepts. Một giải ta khi ăn nên duy trì chân niệm. Nếu tán tâm tạc thoại tính thí sẽ không tiêu đại chúng nghe tiếng chuông xin nhiệt tâm quán. People need love and understanding. How do we learn to give each other more of that? I have learned from my tradition that understanding is the substance of love. If you don't understand the other person, if you don't understand her difficulties, her suffering, her problems, you will not be able to love her. And uh, that is why you have to understand but how to understand, to live mindfully, to have time for her, for him, uh, to have time to look at her, to look at her suffering, to look at her difficulties. And out of that uh, deep looking, uh, you understand. And the moment when you begin to understand love is true, love is real, and it will help uh, that person uh, bloom like a flower. So I would like to say that uh, understanding and, uh, and love are the same thing. True understanding uh, means true love, and true love means true understanding. Uh, uh, it cannot be possible uh, uh, one without the other. Please call me by my true name. Please call me by my true name. So I can wake up, wake up. So the door of my heart will be let open. The door of 
compassion the door of compassion please call me by my true name please call me by my true name so I can wake up wake up so the door of my heart will be left open the door of compassion the door of compassion